all the summer things that we had done before. Like I say abandoning, but it was just, it was a natural process. I think bit by bit, like I said, the seasons got shorter and we were just more geared towards the youth. Um, and then last year we did an entire season of young actors ages 14 to 24. And it wasn't just, it was the first time we hadn't just done shows. Um, the kids did, uh, perform three main stage productions, uh, Your Good Man, Charlie Brown, which is a really fun off-Broadway musical, uh, The Marvelous Wonderettes, which is running off-Broadway right now. That's been off-Broadway for years. It's really, really fun and uh, and challenging, too. And uh, another uh, original play that Jamie wrote called The Fabulous Four. So they were doing these shows, but in addition to that, for the first time, we were offering um, like education opportunities. So what we would do is we would bring in artists. We brought in several artists this summer and they would work with these uh, young students and provide them um, just intensive workshops. So we did a workshop uh, on Shakespeare uh, with Sharon King Campbell and we did a workshop, a vocal workshop with Dr. Jane Leibel. She came in from St. John's. She's one of the uh, Profs at uh, Mun Music School. She's a vocal professor there. Uh, we did dance classes, which was really cool. We brought in a dancer, um, Elizabeth uh, Hartling. So she actually just recently uh, completed her master's in dance teaching at the Royal Academy of Dance. So she's a very accredited dancer, and she came in and basically offered kind of uh, dance classes and just specific dance workshops, movement workshops with the um, the young people there. Um, yeah, that's just to name a few. Um, it was, it was just fantastic. Um, cause then we're not just, uh, providing, you know, we're not just hiring and we hired all these students too. So it's not like we're just giving them a job and okay, here you go. You go on stage. Um, there's so much work that goes in behind that. And this was just extra work on top of rehearsals and everything too. So we were really excited to be able to provide those opportunities um, definitely comes at a cost. So, uh, we're currently kind of fundraising to cover the cost of, uh, last summer. And we hope to continue the Gander Youth Arts Festival and provide those opportunities now, um, in the years to come. It is an amazing, um, what, what you're doing there is, is an amazing initiative. I mean, it's been going on for a while, but it still, it still feels like it's new because you're changing so much. Um, because, exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously I'm a, a big fan of the arts. I work in the arts myself and, and, uh, right. feel very passionate about it. And what I see happening here is opportunities for kids, young people. I mean, they're kids. I mean, some of them are very young. Um, Mm -hmm. to take this talent that you're right. Uh, there's something about, I don't know if it's just this area in Newfoundland. I live here, so, but probably all over the province <laughs> about there's a yeah. little uh, bubble of talent. Uh, like you said, with singing, it's, well, I'm the only one. Apparently mm -hmm. I'm the only one in this entire province who can't sing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like it, it just jumped over it. me, <laughs> but everybody else. And, and I, you know, I remember moving here from, um, Stratford, Ontario, we're near Stratford, Ontario. So you imagine I was exposed to quite a lot of, uh, production and plays and performance and music everywhere I went, you know, it's everywhere in Stratford. Right. That's a very well-known yeah. hub of, uh, of the arts and theater. And I went mm -hmm. to a school concert here in Lewisport and these kids got up and started singing and I was like what <laughs> because I had been in Stratford going to professional productions and there were voices yeah. there that I swear could have been on the stage you know it mm -hmm. it just blew my mind mm -hmm. like every not everybody although almost everybody could sing but every mm -hmm. there were enough there that I was just absolutely floored like I I walked out of it going, these are 12 year olds, 10 year olds. And I'm yeah. listening to these voices going, this is, and, and so having the ability to uh, take that and, and first of all, make it, uh, give it value because here it's like, mm -hmm. oh, well, everybody sings, but then, you know, like someone said, you know, you're, they're driving the chip truck and then they're sitting down, you know, and they're world-class guitar players or, you know, yeah, <laughs> it's like making it seem like it's a viable option 
and not everybody's going to mm-hmm. go into it as a career, but it's on the radar and they're seeing, like you just mm-hmm. said, you brought in uh, people working in these fields to teach them. And those kids are going, oh, someday I could teach that or someday I could be doing that or I can, you know. Exactly. Because you, yeah. you do what you see. You know, when I grew up, mm-hmm. I was going to be a nurse or a teacher because that was all mm-hmm. I saw in my little tiny town. That's what girls grew up to be. Right. So when you see other options and uh, I'm excited that the art seems to be the art industry seems to be growing and, and gaining some momentum in this part of the province. Um, yeah, because, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not everything like it's nice to have something beyond the overpass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, yeah it's yeah. great and it's great too that we're like like you said things are growing and i think we're, people are really starting to take notice um like especially in st john's every time i go into st john's people are talking about what's going on in gander and that makes me so happy that people are noticing it and appreciating it and really showing their support to all over the island people are really supportive of um the work we're doing here yeah, I think uh, I I hear about it too. I hear, and I was hearing about Beyond the Overpass, and and full disclosure, my kids obviously are involved with the theater, um, <laughs> but I was hearing about it for a long time before that. You know, I was it was okay. in the yeah. air, <laughs> you know, and it wasn't until I took my kids to see their friends in one of the productions that we realized that it was that you had the drama for, because we live in Lewisport and you're in Gander. Um, so Mm -hmm. we didn't know that until we went to, they wanted to go see their friends. They're in a play. So of course we did that and, uh, realized that this was an opportunity for them, um, to, Mm -hmm. you know, get involved in it. Um, and I do want to talk for a little bit about Peter and the star catcher. Um, Sure. (laughs) that was a big production. Um, it was so fun. Yes, it was a lot was of fun. Fantastic. Now that was that a- was the first time we've done. Um, like we do, we've like we discussed earlier. I've we've been teaching youth theater since 2012. Um, but we like, a lot of the times we'll do short length plays. We'll do workshops, kind of things on a smaller scale. Um, Peter and Starcatcher was the first big like off Broadway production that we did entirely with all young people. Um, And that includes young people stage managing, young people doing costumes, young people doing uh, set props, um, helping with the instruments, like doing the percussion. I mean, this whole thing was run by um, people under 18 and I think as young as nine. (laughs) Yeah. And it was incredible. Uh, it was done in a very Thank short. <laughs> it was done in a very short period of time as well. You yes, know, you... it was. It was kind of designed as like an intensive thing, um, and we said up front, "Okay, guys, like this is going to be really intense. We're going to have hours and hours of rehearsal time. So it, it's kind of, you know, we're not doing it for fun anymore. Like some people do join theater for fun, and they love it, but they are not interested in being professional actors, and they're not really interested in doing." kind of the extra stuff and that's okay too but this was kind of something outside of the regular theater class that we were like all right this is going to be something for the hardcore you know if you if you're interested and you want to be involved like let's do this together <laughs> it still um amazes me how that went um from the sh- short period of like six weeks or so uh from I audition so, yeah yeah um, from auditions to performance and mm-hmm. realizing that these kids were in school full time, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> so it wasn't like you could and do a lot it every day. Traveled, like it, there was quite a few that traveled in from Lewisport as well. So we, we, you we know, drove, we had to. That yeah. was a lot of <laughs> work and time as well for the kids to be and parents and and the, driving in and out. But f- and what I can say, being a parent of one of the kids involved in the in the pro- program in that particular production was that I don't think that there could have been not just the drama and not just learning theater, but I don't think there could have been a better lesson for kids on compromise, collaboration, Mm -hmm. teamwork, 
um, mm -hmm. getting it done, deadlines, um, mm -hmm. you know, because there were deadlines. Okay, you got to be off book by this date. You got to be this. So, I mean, they were rehearsing. Mm -hmm. And then they would get creative in how, um, you know, they had to remember. And they were getting together outside. I know here in Lewisport, they were getting together mm -hmm. and working together here in Lewisport to get ready to go to Gander to do the next thing that had to be done. And right. then volunteering when they didn't have to. I remember, um, mm -hmm. you know, taking kids in to do props and the other kids are like, we want to go and help. Yeah, exactly. You know, on their exactly. Saturday afternoon. It was an amazing experience. And I got to say what it was all over. I mean, <laughs> the kids were devastated, but also they just, I mean, we had an after party for them and all they did was sit around in a circle without, you know, us <laughs> kind of initiating anything. They sat around a circle and they passed around pineapple and they literally just had like a therapy session, just talking to each other about how much they meant to one another and how much they had learned about one another. A lot of these kids too, like because of those big age ranges, they really didn't know each other. Right. Um, you know, a 10 year old and an 18 year old or a 15 year old, they, they didn't go to school together. They just really didn't didn't know each other and just how all those walls were broken down and there's so many tears and hugs and <laughs> there was a very special bond created kind of besides what you saw on stage which turned out amazingly well there was so much behind the scenes and I think there's so much that will be carried in in their hearts and like you said le lessons learned I think that will go with them for the rest of their lives they have they all had a maturity about them and i don't know if it's because of this or uh they brought this to that production but they all that group of kids have a maturity about them that i don't see in a lot of adults sometimes especially the emotional maturity and how they you mm -hmm. know if somebody's sad they all cluster they still do it to this mm -hmm. day they still you know they're all on a little group chat and they you know somebody's not yeah. well so they all get together and make sure that's okay and um yeah so I it's you know very I, beautiful it is it's very beautiful <laughs> and especially during the teen years which can be challenging for kids mm -hmm. and they're you know figuring out who they are and uh the theater gives them the freedom to be whoever they want to be in some sense you know mm -hmm. you have to be open. and they're all accepted I think theater is just such a, that's something we, we have to teach is you're all accepted and we all have to be in theater you have to be honest you have to be honest with yourself and with the others around you. You have to have that, build that trust. And I think if people, I don't know, I really do think if people embrace that in their life and, and live their life more like that, I think a, a lot of world issues could be solved. And I just think that a lot of people um, could really learn to understand each other um, a lot better. <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> You're preaching to the choir. And, and I don't think I realized it uh, until they got involved with this um, uh, group that uh, it does, it brings them together and they have to collaborate and they have to get along and they do. And kids are mm -hmm. just that way, you know, they're open to new things and uh, mm -hmm. they've all, and they're all different. I mean, they still have their very distinct personalities and everything, but everybody's just, definitely, you know, and I'm sure it's yeah. not. And that's important too, right? To be yourself and to be unique and to bring, because everyone has something different to bring to the table, right? Especially in like, like say in theater and theater is life and life is theater. I don't know. Um, but the, everybody has something important to bring and everyone has a voice and it's so important to um to know your voice and to let that be heard and to also listen to others when they're speaking so it's just a beautiful way to learn i think communicative skills and and respect i think for other people's opinions as well yeah and i i and so you've been doing a lot of fundraising well go back to this now um a lot of yes. fundraising like it's been <laughs> intense fundraising yeah. i haven't been as involved as i could have been because i've been too busy but um <laughs> there's been a lot of fundraising it's going very well i think um yeah it's getting going close amazing to, and the kids yeah. are incredible <laughs> the kids are in it they are whatever they can do uh the parents that are helping out and getting things organized. And there've been a lot of mini fundraisers all over the place and it's, it's all accumulating and, uh, and yeah. making a difference. Um, will that continue through next year? Like after Christmas and beyond? Um, I think the biggest thing was to basically make this, um, make this change work with the Gander Youth Arts Festival. Um, like I mentioned before, it does come at a huge cost for us because we lost a lot of funding that we had built up over the years. And um, we just kind of needed, we needed this to work in order 
to stay here and to continue to offer all of these things. Um, so it, it went really well, um, to like up to this point. Um, when we have several other fundraisers now, um, planned, 